Yeah, all right, here we go. Whoa! <laughs> that was freaking awesome! Dad, give it a big send, full throttle. Welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me just outside of Orlando at a really awesome lake where we are exploring electric in a non-vehicle application. It's still related to transportation, but we are gonna be riding electric jet skis today. Um, you guys know I'm a huge power sports enthusiast, grew up riding motorcycles and ATVs and snowmobiles and a whole bunch of other stuff. And now finally electric is making its way into power sports. So what we're gonna do today is take a look at the Taiga Orca. I've also made some videos with their electric snowmobile before, and I'll leave those linked in the description. And we're gonna see if electric works as far as power sports goes. Here's my friend, Justin from Bearded Tesla Guy on YouTube, riding the Taiga Orca in, looking awesome. I'll give you the, of course, the full specs on this thing, how it works, how it runs, the power figures, the pricing, then we'll jump on, I'll ride it for the first time, and then we'll just have some fun with friends out on the lake riding an electric jet ski. So when a whole bunch of YouTubers to get together to drive electric jet skis, we have our Model 3, this is our friend, yeah. friend's Model Y, we have Dominic's 3, Justin's X, my dad rented this Tycon, and then our friend on Twitter who's a Rivian software brought over his Rivian. So it's just, I mean, it's a beautiful home here as well. Just insane. We're charging up because our puppy's in dog mode. And um, yeah, I got to do a video with my dad on his Tycon experience. Justin's X is just looking so sick. I've really come around to the new refreshed X's. I love these things. He's got it slammed out in low suspension. Just everyone's got their AC blasting on all the cars. <laughs> it's, it's 100 degrees out here, but dang, just toys everywhere. Toys on toys on toys. This is crazy. Well, you joined me suited up for safety in uh, also not very, uh, never really wear shorts. So <laughs> I'm, I'm completely two different colors. I died laughing today. <laughs> yeah. It's not a good look. I'm sorry that you have to watch it. You actually, you don't have to watch this. You could just click away now. Should have clicked away two minutes ago. Um, that's the Taiga Orca and it, it's, there's a few different trim levels and a few different versions of this. And, uh, what I'm going to do is walk you through roughly what we're going to be riding today. It's important to think about what Taiga is first. Taiga is a Canadian power sports company originally starting with, uh, it's amazing. You know, they're ripping around out here. You can barely hear this thing. You hear the water more than anything. <laughs> Full sand nation. <laughs> so that's going to be so much fun. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I cannot wait. Uh, <laughs> we got all of our friends here. Dominic Yoni, uh, I'll link his channel below. My dad, Justin, we got Rivian Software on uh, Twitter over here. I'll link that as well. So just a whole bunch of friends out here ripping around. And I want to say a huge thanks to our friend Kevin at Tyga for inviting us to go for a test drive. <laughs> he is whipping that thing. And uh, Alyssa's looking very excited behind the camera because she loves this kind of stuff. There he comes, waiting for a stop. Yeah. <laughs> so excuse a little bit of the confusion and craziness early on. Battery pack is mid 20 kilowatt hours. That's the big thing I was curious about. So mid 20 kilowatt hour battery pack. I don't know exact gross usable capacity. Tyga doesn't officially state it, but uh, should be enough for a couple hours of playtime, they say. So you go out a couple hours later, you're good to go. In terms of like consistent range, which isn't so much of a concern in certain applications, rental and riding around the lake, they say roughly 28 to 30 miles, something like that. Doesn't seem like much. But when you factor in this thing's getting the efficiency of like three Tesla Model Ys cruising around in the water, pushing all the water out of the way, it's like, okay, yeah, it's, driving through water is a very thirsty application, especially when you're ripping it hard, having fun. 
So it's all about going out, having a quick blast, and then pulling it in. Perfect for living here at the lake. We're at this beautiful home. Take a look over here to the right, uh, out on the lake here. For sale, if anybody wants it. For sale, we'll leave a link to that as well. Uh, so that's gonna be epic. And then you can basically take out the jet ski, run to see your neighbors, go do whatever. Um, they've also mentioned, Tyga said that they've they've sold a few to some like super yachts where they like are parked on the top or even in a little oh, garage. Sick. And then they pull out the electric jet skis and charge them up when they get back onto the mothership. So so to me, it's not so much the electric bit sort of enhancing your life, like an electric car has so many benefits to charging at home, leaving full every day, all those things. The electric jet skis, this is a toy. And so you're definitely spending a premium going for electric. This thing is $27,000 as tested. They will have most of them. This is a carbon fiber chassis, carbon fiber tub. Most of them are going to be in that you know seventeen to nineteen thousand dollar range. Same powertrain, just with a fiberglass or plastic, more traditional construction. That's what I would recommend going for. I don't see the benefits of carbon on here. Perhaps there's some unique uh, strength structural situations, but not really too much. Um, We'll talk about more when we get in there, but I think, you know, figure if you want one, it's going to be like 19 grand, something like that for a production non-carbon fiber version. And that's significantly more than the combustion versions of even the top end uh, electric jet skis. So this has to be fast. It has to be fun. And most importantly to me, it's got to be cool and interesting. It's a talking point. It's enjoyable to go out and ride. Hopefully we'll find out. And so I'm all in on electric power sports applications, but I, I have to be totally honest with you. This is just for, you know, people that are very well off who love EVs who love having fun and also not polluting or playing around with new technology whatever their reason might be for me it's all about the tech it's so cool to see how electric works and that's what I want to bring you on the drive or on the ride of today so uh, it's a basically a single um, uh, single no reduction gear it's basically motor half shaft I guess a shaft right out to the propeller absolutely rips um, we'll talk about some of the intricacies of riding it because unlike other jet skis, you actually can't steer in reverse with the way they do their powertrain system. And uh, so that, that is a downside right off the bat, but it doesn't seem that big of a deal because just watching Justin maneuver here, he would back up, hit the throttle, get the thing positioned where he wanted to go, and then he could re-reverse. Um, it's early days though. I'm sure that we'll see plenty of revisions. They can build, uh, you know, maybe a couple thousand this year at most is kind of what it sounds like somewhere around there. And then huge ramp up of production going into the following year. They have tons of reservations for snowmobiles and jet skis, a waiting list. But actually, a lot of them come from global outside of our market and they're delivering in market now. So one thing that's cool is if you want one of these, you can get one before the summer season is over. Just uh, go to Tyga's website, reserve one. I'll Again, leave another link in the description. Lots of links in this one and make sure that you guys can uh, order one and play around with it. Love to see some of you get some. I've already had on Twitter, people are like, damn, I want to buy one right now. I'm like, okay, I'll give you the links in a minute. So I'm going to jump on it. We're going to go for our first ride and see what it's all about. Oh, that's cool. Got a front. Yeah, got a front. Yeah, you can, you can <laughs> stuff like a lunch You bag. join me now on the Taiga Orca. And there's a few things I want to show you around the, uh, the unit here pretty quickly. The first is under here is uh, all of your sort of mandated flares and safety equipment inside of this bucket. But then there's also some storage. You have a fire extinguisher, but you have enough room to pack a lunch for out on the go and also bring a charging cable with you. I've been to plenty of docks uh, boating and uh, you know they always have the little 30 amp connections there. So you can always just hook up, charge up over lunch and go. It's always probably a good idea to carry a cable with you and try and find one that's definitely water certified. <laughs> Contact Tom Malagny if you're curious about the best water resistant chargers. He would be the guy to go to. On the seat itself, really wide chassis, plenty of room to sit here. The seat's quite comfortable as well. Everything feels pretty standard jet ski to me. Definitely room for two people. We're gonna have Alyssa join as well on the initial ride. Um, and then actually, if you can kind of come over down this way, I wanna show you this screen over here because on this screen, it might be a little bit difficult to see. We have our speed, we have our kilowatt output, and we have our RPM, and the RPM is a one-to-one -one for sort of the jet drive that um, will come out. So I'm guessing about 8,500 RPM peak. We have uh, our kilowatt output says up to about 120 kilowatt output, 160 horsepower in this particular thing. So it should be pretty spicy. Um, there's a few different settings as well. There's three modes to ride. There's range, sport, and wild. We'll start in range and we'll work our way up. And then there's also our trim settings here to adjust the uh, pitch of the uh, jet output 
so we could stick the nose, the bow all the way down for full top speed and launches, or we could stand this thing straight up. Uh, so you can go up to, from zero as standard, you can go minus three and plus four in the settings. We'll play around with what those are like. In terms of triggers, I have throttle on the right, reverse on the left. Again, no steering in reverse because unlike other jet skis that might have a little flap that comes out for the rear motor, if you take a look back here, you'll see the output. Um, it's actually pushing the air uh, in reverse and it comes out the little inlet um, you know, plate underneath the uh, vehicle. The carbon fiber versions have a bilge pump on them, which is interesting. So if water gets in the hole, you can actually bilge that out. But the uh, standard models, the ones again, that's 17 to $19,000 uh, ones, those will just force the water out with speed. So those will come out. Um, yeah, all, all seems really cool here. There's not much really to complain about. It's just like fun, electric, perfect day out on the lake. This is what uh, living is all about. We absolutely love toys and uh, can't wait to go for a rip. One last thing is um, Tyga tells me this will actually regen for short bursts. So we'll have to see how much regen we can get out of it. We'll go top speed, lift off the throttle and uh, see if we can charge the battery slightly. I also have two extra gauges on this screen, something to keep an eye on, battery temp and motor temp. It's about 100 degrees out here and this thing's out of the water. So battery temp is just right of center where motor temp is just left of center. They tell me the motor, you can do anything you want to this thing, that's not gonna overheat. The battery is something to keep an eye on in really hot, hardcore conditions. But even then they're like, unless you're DC charging this thing back to back, it's no problem. And again, it does have a cooling loop. So they're like, yeah, it's just unless you're, you know, just like a normal Tesla Model 3 performance or something, you just drive it and don't worry about the temperature. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll get Alyssa on the back of this thing. You'll join me for my first ride on the Taiga Orca. And uh, let's go have some fun out on the lake here in Orlando. You join us now heading out for a cruise. Uh, I gotta hit the start button first, that would help. There we go, a little bit of reverse action. And now we can go forwards with the right, uh, the right knob. And here we are, just heading out gently. Alyssa, what do you think about this? I think we're already pretty much underwater here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. show everyone down here, we're, we've soaked up water on the reverse. Yeah, but, but that's not a big deal. Yeah, that'll come out as we go. So we're just gently cruising along and uh, in range mode. And initial impressions are, I can see we're doing three kilowatt power output, there's five. So six kilowatts there. I should mention the charging speed since we're talking about power output. Right in here is the charging port, it's a CCS port. Can you see that on the camera there? And uh, I did ask, hey, when are y'all gonna switch to NAX? And they were like, oh, just keep an eye out. Maybe, maybe not, we'll see. Um, they actually didn't really say anything, no official response, but they will switch to NAX, everyone's gonna switch. But 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard charger, they claim peak of 50 kilowatt DC charging, which is pretty sweet. So um, look at this, we're out on the lake in Orlando, just absolutely epic. Alyssa, you're holding on, right? Now I am. Real tight, are you sure? Because I'm gonna give it the full beans. I don't really know how. Yeah, you gotta hold on like that. Okay. All right, ready? Yeah. We're in range mode, I'm gonna floor it. Here we go. Oh, okay. Full send. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Full send nation. <laughs> How epic is that? That's a lot of tilt. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can again adjust the tilt a little bit. Yeah, but the thing absolutely cool. rips. We'll go into the wake. Oh Look god. at that. You always want to go right into the wake. So that's 40 kilowatt output in range mode. <laughs> this thing is absolutely epic. We'll let the bow come up here a little bit. Nice. We can slowly come to a, come to a stop. There we go. We got 0.7 kilowatts of regen right there. So now you've joined me for the initial first test. And Alyssa's on the back just to film what that's all like. We're at 90% state of charge, 89 and all seems pretty damn good. I'm gonna bump this thing up into sport mode. And Alyssa, let's just go cruising. They said sport mode's gonna be the main mode. You gotta hold on. You got this thing in 0.5? Yeah. Great. Yeah, sorry for the poor filming quality. It's a little bit difficult to figure out how to do this. We're gonna try not to run over anyone. But let's, uh, let's put the nose down a little bit here. Yeah, buddy, here we go. Some wake, you ready? 
<laughs> How sick is this? Oh shit, it's got some power, holy crap. Did you feel that, Alyssa? Yeah. That wasn't even floored. <laughs> Ready to give it some beans? Okay. Yep. Yeah, all right, here we go. Oh! <laughs> Whoa! That was freaking awesome! You probably need to fit the phone in to go. Oh my god! Is the <laughs> that was crazy! Yeah. Oh my God, it's so fast. It's so fast. We got a big boat over here. <laughs> All right, let's go for it. Big speed. Full send nation. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> this is so freaking fun. And I will come back in. <laughs> oh, that's absolutely epic. That was just sport. Yeah. That was just sport. Is it? What's wild then? Wild's technically faster. Okay, I gotta try wild, but it, it's hard to film with all that. <laughs> it's it's great. It's got tons of power. Holy oh, smokes! Yeah. He's in wild mode. Out of spec, Dave. All right, so the I think he accidentally put it in range mode. Yeah, that felt slower. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's range mode. <laughs> Dad, give it a big send, full throttle. So Alyssa, you've been riding it around for a little bit now. What's What's been your impression of the Orca and maybe electric jet skis in general? Is it your first time ever riding a jet ski? This is my first time ever, so I don't really have a basis to go off of other than um, maybe electric isn't the, the for first timers. Oh, why is <laughs> that? Pretty, I mean, it's just pretty scary to hard, be harder to handle. Well, I think that's any jet ski. Oh, well. I thought it was a ton of fun, definitely would do it again, um, just to get more comfortable with everything, but um, I loved it. Are we getting one? Well, that's up to you. I figured if you could just, you know, head out, back it up just a tiny bit, and then head out and show our viewers you riding this thing, Do uh, put it in, you know, sport mode. You got it in sport? <laughs> put, put it in sport. You don't have to put it in wild mode. Give it a quick little juice just to get it to spin. There you go. Then a little more, a little more juice to pull away. Nice. Yeah, give it, give it a hard throttle. Hold on tight. See what it's got. Thing is pretty quick. <laughs> Yeah, good. Yeah. They will actually get used to it because they can't take it to um, the wild. It's a ripper. It's awesome. It's gray state. Now, there you guys go some fun out on the lake today we did a lot of riding around of course it's kind of a hard thing to film um but my impression of the taiga orca is seemingly built really well as you can see you just rip them up on the uh, docks here we i kind of did some really dumb stuff with it and it took it fine got a little bit of regen blasted at top speed across was bombing it around so much fun you can really you know maneuver these things around quite well it was Alyssa's first time on a jet ski and she didn't really <laughs> know how to like work everything she didn't really love it yeah. but i think okay. not because it was the taiga orca but because she's not totally into jet skis we've learned uh, which i was surprised about because i thought she was gonna be like we gotta get one now and get the out of spec taiga fleet but apparently not but we still might end up with some at some point um really a cool device to have fun certainly you're paying a premium 
for a less functional device on paper. There's no way to put it. You have a huge range limitation, you have an increase of cost, and then of course you have more batteries that you need to manage You know, throughout your household. You have your cars, your electronics, and now your toys. You need to look at charge levels, charge rates, all of those things. It would be really cool, I think, if you have a fleet of these to tie them in, you know, jet ski to home, if you will, some sort of let the because these will be used even less in some cases than um, you know RVs would be and those you know their electrical systems so it'd be great to use the battery packs in these for something else while they're sitting perhaps that will come out in the future um, but no question if you have a little bit extra money that you're willing to spend on your toys you want to have some fun with an electric application for me if I was going to buy some jet skis I would only consider these because it's so cool. It's electric. It's putting the, the pushing the tech forwards. It's certainly not perfect, but it means you can go and find docks that have chargers and do all the same stuff we do out on the road, but now out on the water. So I've really enjoyed my time here. Again, it's a it's a niche application that's not going to work for everything. There's enough applications though out there where they'll sell everyone they can make for years and years and years. Uh, similar to when we talked about electric trucks and things like that. There's enough applications where you know demand far outstrips the supply and. And truly these are next level fun and awesome no winterizing needed you just throw them away pull them back out and have some more fun so can't thank everyone enough for coming all the other creators and friends of ours that decided to join us today it was really a great time and um yeah just don't want to stop riding these things are great we'll see you in another out of spec reviews video soon bye-bye his to paws take... are as big as his head yeah. <laughs> yes this, this is walter this is Walter's first time on Out of Spec Reviews. You holding him. This is our new Out of Spec. Did you like the jet ski? Did you like it? all the questions. You were just chilling. You didn't have anything to say. What do you think? That's his first time on, on YouTube. You did a pretty good job. Yeah, that's, that's our new Out of Spec Newfoundland. Walter. He's a good boy. Your beard is grown. Thank <laughs> you.